Welcome to beautiful Madrid, one of Spain's most popular cities. This year, Vital Options International took on its seventh year providing on-site coverage of the signature gathering, the Essential ESMO Congress. The European Society of Medical Oncology combined the efforts of the most important European oncology professionals with the aim of improving prevention, diagnosis, treatment, and the care of cancer patients. And the timing could not have been better. From new therapies and cutting edge technologies to the role of the patient advocacy organizations, this ESMO gathering represented the finest that the oncology community has to offer. Vital Options was there to capture the highlights, the insights, and the stories behind the science from oncology's most insightful thought leaders and most accomplished advocates. This is how Vital Options International is truly generating global cancer conversations. introduce uh, Stefan. He's a medical oncologist at the hospital Emil Mayrisch and Esch in Luxembourg, and he's one of the authors of the ESMO Patient Guide on Cancer Survivorship, which has been mentioned. And so I'd like to hear from you, Stefan, what some of your thoughts are on rehabilitation from the medical oncology uh, point of view. So there you go, and I promise we'll come uh, back to you, Francesca. Sorry about, sorry about that, because that's going to make a short um, intermission from the very passionate discussion we have. If, if anyone here has still a doubt that for, uh, for oncologists, survivorship issues um, are of importance, um, well, with this you should not. So this is the brand new ESMO uh, ECPC survivorship guide. And what you can see in the first chapter up front is rehabilitation. Now, if this is this important, why don't we see it on site? Why don't you get rehabilitation? And let me say, well, of course, there are financial, there's political issues. It's also a question of awareness. Yeah? And there is something quite fantastic about the survivorship issues. It's that we actually have long-term survivors, and this is certainly not something we were used to when I started my training. And so up to, up to now, I think, for a lot of oncologists, survivorship care corresponds to follow-up visits. And as long as I see my patients back, they look rather lively, the CT scan is fine, the blood work is fine, I'll say, well, good to go. See you in three months. So we have to switch gears. But there is an awareness problem like there were for many others, like for integrating palliative care into our everyday treatment of active disease. And this is a joint effort. And it is a complex effort because, well, as you already heard, it's physical rehabilitation, it's psychological rehabilitation, and it's social reintegration, which is probably still one of the biggest challenges when I heard what I heard just now. Up to now, wherever it exists, and for sure in Europe and even more around the globe, this is a very, very heterogeneous pattern. It looks like a little bit like a puzzle which is unfinished and of which some pieces are scattered around the table. What we need is we need a track. We need to know how to, how to organize survivorship care. We need a framework. We need evidence-based because there's certainly lots of energy lost in transit because we do things which don't necessarily help you. And there's pioneer work from Françoise, from Professor Meunier on that field, fortunately, but that is quite recent. We didn't do that 20 years ago. How, and of course, sorry, and of course we need an alarm bell which has to ring in every oncologist as soon as the active treatment is over, which tells him, okay, shift gears. Now we need a plan, uh, we need awareness and a plan for survivorship. 
How should that work? Now, in Luxembourg, we're not forerunners. We're, we're just implementing right now a plan with an outpatient um, program and an inpatient program for frail or older patients. This is not yet uh, realized. It's going to be next year. Um, actually, it's not quite clear. Different countries have different systems. Um, usually, uh, they work in the beginning whenever they work for, for a couple of weeks. And next thing, very important, of course, they can only kick off because as you can see and as you, as you witnessed, um, well, survivorship goes up for, for much more time. You were telling, um, it, it doesn't end with four, four weeks of cure someplace in a th thermal, uh, thermal hospital. It goes on for years. And so what we need is we need to educate. We need to educate. You patients, we need to get educated as medical oncologists. And we need, again, what we do imply more and more in our everyday oncology, it's pluridisciplinarity. Because who is going to deliver it? It's not the oncologist, or certainly not only the oncologist. But it's, it can be a GP. And who knows, in some countries, it's going to be the general practitioner who is going to take back the patient as soon as the active treatment is gone. So it won't be the oncologist. And we need nurses, physiotherapists, we need psychologists, we need social assistants, and so on and so on. And sorry for those who I forgot. So all of these people, we got to put in a framework. We got to organize, to sit together, to have some kind of checklists. I love checklists. <laughs> for, to, get, to get this started. And we have to have a rational way to put people on the track. And hopefully we get there quite soon. Thank you.